Welcome back. It is, of course, Money Motivations once again. I am so excited about today's message because I know it's going to bless every single one of us. So if you are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. Make sure you go ahead and like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. And don't forget to press the notification bell. It's a great button below. That button is awesome sauce because it keeps you updated with all our upcoming videos. So I'm just so grateful to God just for this message. The title is, Is Your House in Order? Is Your House in in order praise be to God so if you're new to us praise God for your life this is butterfly ambassador ministries and God gave me this ministry going on three years now back in 2016 you know so I just thank God for just his will you know upon my life so I'm grateful to God for this ministry I don't take it lightly at all and this is what it means we are beautifully anointed in his image to spread the gospel to all nations. So I just thank God for each and every single one of you that are viewing this because you are eager to hear what God has to say. You desire a relationship with Christ. If you don't know him yet, well, I thank God that you are watching this because you get to know the Father for yourself through a relationship with Jesus Christ. So I thank God for you guys. Let's go right into it. I'm going to pray us in as always and let the Holy Spirit have his way and saturate this entire message on today. So get your journals out, get your Bibles out, because God has a word for us all to hear today. So praise God for you. Let's pray. So Father God, we just thank you, Lord Jesus, for you. We just thank you, God, for just being so merciful to us. We thank you, God, for your forgiveness towards us. We thank you, God, for your loving kindness towards us, Lord Jesus. We just thank you, Holy Spirit, for just leading our tongues, for guiding our every which way. God, we thank you that thy word is a light to our foot. So we just thank you, God, for being our path, making it as straight, not going to the left nor the right, but going straight ahead towards you, God, for you are our word daily. So we just thank you, Holy Spirit, for just showing us whose we are in you. We thank you, God, for the reminder on today to get our house in order so i thank you holy spirit for reminding us that we are of you we are not of this world we do not own our bodies so i thank you holy spirit for reminding us that that body that we have is the temple of you so i thank you god for reminding us that we are of you and not this world and it's okay. The enemy is trying to be to have distractions, trying to mess up what God has going. But I bind you in the name of Jesus. You have no authority right now in the name of Jesus. I cancel every single demonic assignment in the name of Jesus. I cast forth right now in the name of Jesus peace that surpasses all understanding. I thank you, God, for this word on today. The enemies are already upset, and I am grateful for it. I praise God in the name of Jesus. My, my ministry right now will send forth angels to do the will of him in the name of Jesus. So I thank you for right now, God. We're stepping on the serpent's head right now in the name of Jesus. So I thank you, God, right now for the ministry. Whoever is watching this and you are distracted remove anything that's not like god right now from your mind right now whatever happened at your job and your family and your in your life and your marriage and with your kids with your ministry with your business whatever it is you cast down that thought right now in the name of jesus you cast it down you cast it down right now you know distractions god is not you to be distracted right now in the name of jesus so you cast it down right now you open your ear gates to hear what god has for us to know on today you open in your ear gates in the name of Jesus. You open your eyes to hear what God wants you to hear on today. It's not about Jaleesa. It's about what you need to hear from God. So right now in the name of Jesus, anything that's not like you, 
God, I bind in the name of Jesus. Spirit of affirming must go. The spirit of division must go. The spirit of jealousy must go. The spirit of envy must go. The spirit of anger, the spirit of greed in the name of Jesus. It must go in the name of Jesus. I cast down every single satanic attack on your life in the name of Jesus. If you know Jesus for yourself, I cast it down right now in the name of Jesus. If you don't know Jesus for yourself, repeat this after me right now. Right now. God, I am sorry. Lord, forgive me for all the sins I've committed. Every single sin I've committed. Lord, forgive me right now in the name of Jesus. I want to come back to you, Lord Jesus. I've done things my way, and that is not the way of you. So, God, I, I surrender my life to you right now in the name of Jesus. God, I cast my cares upon you. There is no fear within me. I cast my cares upon you you and you through your son i believe that your son died for my sins and he rose three days later so that i may have life more abundantly in the name of jesus god i thank you right now right now for the breakthrough in the name of jesus i thank you for the walls being broken from people that are not hearing the righteous words from you in the churches god i i cast down anything that's not like you right now in their homes any idols Anything that's not like you, God, I bind it in the name of Jesus right now. In the name of Jesus. No more distractions. No more worrisome. No more fears. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, but of love and a sound mind. So, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I cast this away from your people in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. For those that believe in you, for those that are renewed in you, for those that have now the right spirit, I thank you for it right now that they have eyes to hear, ear, ears, eyes to see, ears to hear in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for that release in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God breaking the chains right now. We are removing distractions right now. The enemy has no place here. In the name of Jesus, we cast it away in the name of Jesus. He is bind in the name of Jesus. Go back to the lake of fire you belong to, devil. You have no place here. Amen. All right, so as you can see, this is a message for everybody here because the enemy is already trying it. So whatever you're going through right now, cast that to Jesus. You have to let that go. You can't go into what God has for you. You can't go into what God has for you with baggage, with fear, with, you know, comparing yourself to other people, with, you know, whatever generational curses that you have been holding on to. You can't go into what God has for you in the kingdom of God. You can't go into that with that mindset. So we have to put off the old man and be renewed in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It's about to be a powerful word from the Lord today. Woo! I feel the presence. Okay. So our title today, guys, is, is your house in order? So the enemy doesn't like this, apparently, and that's okay because God gets the glory. So let's go ahead and start with the first point. Write this down. Firm foundation. Firm foundation. Write it down. Firm foundation. God wants us to know what that really means. We know a lot of times on HGTV, we see there's a firm foundation that, that a lot of the builders have to work on in order for them to build up the house and the concrete and have everything stabilized and formatted so that the house can be firm and on a you know nice foundation. But let's go to our spiritual father. And let's read what he says about having a firm foundation. So let's go ahead and go to 2 Timothy in your Bibles. Go to chapter 2, verses 19 through 21. So 2 Timothy, verses um, 19 through 21, chapter 2. It reads this. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And... Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. That's what the enemy is mad. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. 
If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Friends, is your house in order? God is showing us, is our vessel in order? Like, is the house that God has given us, our temple, our bodies, the temple of the Lord, is our house in order? What is internally within us? Like, when things don't go according to your plan, what do you do? Like, are you eager to complain or eager to get frustrated or eager to just cuss, fuss, drink, smoke, just have random sex partners? Like, what do you do? Is your house in order? Like, what is internally within you? Is it pleasing to God? Because if God cannot get the glory for what is internally within you, then your house is shaky your house is out of order your house is not on a solid foundation like a solid foundation where it is firm is sure of who you are in christ not one minute you know little lord you know what i'm saying but the next minute well you know he's kind of cute mm, let me go talk to him like no, no 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 are you on a firm foundation where when god asks you to do something you are going to do it or when God tells you something, you're like, Lord, but mm, would I get me enough money? Like, if I do that, will, will I get money from that? Like, will I get something out of this, Lord? Like, what's in it for me, God? Like, if I do this, like, will it even, like, do anything for me? Like, you have to really ask yourself these questions. Like, are you really doing what God wants you to do for God's glory? Or is it about your story on Facebook? Like, ask yourself that question. Like, are you doing a thing so that people will see you're doing great things? So that people will, you know, applaud you and say, oh, you're doing a great job. Like, you're doing this, 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 this. Or are you doing things that God has told you to do so that God will get the glory? That God will see the fruit that is being manifested from the work you're doing for him? Ask yourself. Let me read that again. It says, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. The foundation of God standeth sure. See, a foundation of God stands firm. You're not going to teeter-totter. It's not going to be shaky, rocky. It's not going to be, you know, one minute you love the Lord, next minute you're not praying. One minute you're praying, next minute you're not loving the Lord. One minute you're shacking up with somebody, the next minute you're cussing with somebody, the next minute you're going to a club, the next minute you're going, talking about somebody gossiping. It shouldn't be foolishness. There should be no foolishness, no trickery, no back and forth, no worldly ways. You should be striving to be perfected in Christ daily. You should be always praying as unto the Lord and asking him, Lord, what do you need me to do for you today? Lord, what is my assignment today? What is my assignment? Many people ask me, well, Julissa, why do you work at that job? Like, you should be doing something else. Like, you could be, you know, doing things for the, for the world and, like, you know, uh, ministering at places and going places. And I'm like, I'm on a God assignment. Thank you for your concern, but... I'm on a God assignment here. I'm doing what God has told me to do. He placed me here for a reason and a season. But I'm doing things because God has sent me here. I told the Lord, send me, Lord, I'll go. I am your holy vessel. So where you send me, Lord, I'll go. That's why I am where I am. Thank you, sis, for asking. But I am... I'm good. Like, I am doing what God has called me to do. What about you? You know? Now, let me read on the last part of oh, verse 21st. It says, But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man, and man means women and men, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work are you idolizing things in your house are you idolizing things in your home do you put things on a pedestal before god is your iphone so glamorous that you can't even have the bible app on it like is your <laughs> jesus is your iphone so top-notch that you can't even have a scripture verse as a meme on your social media? 
Like, what do you idolize? Is the first thing when you wake up in the morning, is it to pray unto the Lord? Or is it to put a cute picture on Facebook, Instagram? Like, what is your... What what are you idolizing? What are you idolizing? Does that feed your temple? Does that feed your spirit? Ask yourself that question. Is your house in order? Because if you are worshiping these idols in your home, how can God even get the glory? How can God even hear your prayers? See, if you are putting anything before God, how do you expect God to even bless you? When you're putting something before the creator that created you. Like, how does that even make sense? It doesn't make sense when I'm saying it, right? So, in your daily lives, why would you allow someone or something to be before God? You declare and decree that you love the Lord Jesus with all your heart, mind, and soul, Right? But yet you're putting a man that God has not appointed you to marry before the creator that created you. He has not proposed to you, sis. Why is he shacking up with you? Why are you in the same bed with this man? You are not his. Like, there. I mean, there's no way to sugarcoat that. I mean, there's no, it's just point blank. You are not married to him. He should not have any part of your body. He should not have any part of your body. If you are not married, this is in the Bible. This is not a random, you know, rant. Like, no, this is in the Bible. If he is not your husband, you should not be even entangling with fornication. That is dishonoring the Lord. That is an idol. If you're idolizing something or someone that's not what God is calling you to do why are you doing it why that is not feeding your body your temple your house any good fruit because if you're going to bring in children in this mix that's what happens with sex happens right you're going to bring in children in this mix where is the foundation what are your children going to be learning from you you are their role model so if you are going to be in, in implementing godly principles to their lives you have to show them how to lead by example so if you are not operating in excellence as God has commanded you to do so, fix it. You know, repent onto as onto the Lord and alter the ways. You know, separate, get into a new apartment. You know, um, if your name's on the lease, then pray on how to remove yourself from that because you don't want to entangle in anything that's not pleasing God. I don't care if he's cute. I don't care if he's the father of your children. God has not appointed that to be marriage yet, so don't continue in the sin. You can't continue in a sin and expect God to bless. God's not going to bless anything that's not righteous. He's just not. He's not. So you can't pent God. You can't trick God into doing anything that's not of God because God does not lie, okay? So you're not going to do anything that's not in the righteous path that God has set for you. You have to get your temple in order. Your body has to be in order with God for God to flow through you. That's how it works, friends. So if the person that you are involved with does not understand who whose you are, check that relationship. A man that is after God's heart will wait for you. A man that's after Jesus Christ will have some firm principles to honor your body, to to respect you, to wait, help you, encourage you to wait till you guys are married. I thank God for my husband. Like, it, it takes a disciplined man that loves the Lord, that respects you fully, to wait. To wait. There's nothing wrong with waiting. Because think about it this way. Anything that comes to you easy will disappear quick. So I'd rather invest into someone that is going to be investing into my time and knowing who I am in Christ and knowing the purpose that God has set for my life so that we can grow in ministry together, that we can grow in this life that God has ordained for us together. You know, that's where, you know, he will bless the marriage and he will bless you to have children. Because if you are operating in God's will everything that you are designing will happen in Jesus name because you are operating 
in the right standing with God. You're operating the right principles. You're praying unto the Lord. Of course, you're going to need prayer along the way, of course. And you're going to have accountability partners that will help you to have that firm foundation in the beginning of the relationship so that it won't be shaky, it won't be of the world. You will stay on the righteous path that God has set both of you to be on because God will bear witness with your spirit if that person is meant for you to be with for eternity. God will bear witness with your spirit it won't be about the looks or about the flesh wants. It'll be about what the spirit needs for you to grow and mature in Christ. So let's go ahead and go to Matthew. So Matthew is going to be chapter 7. We're going to go to 24 through 27. It reads this. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house. And it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand." And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great fall was the fall of it. Wow. So, friends, hear what the word of God is saying to you. Anything that's built on a firm foundation will stand. Anything that's built on a worldly, you know, fleshly, sin-filled, just do whatever I want to do, like, it doesn't matter, like, whatever I want to do, I want to do it, you know what I'm saying? That kind of mentality is going to fall. It's going to fall. You know, you see a lot of times with um, people on these commercials, these commercials talk about cancer and all this other mess and smoking and all this other crap and these diseases and stuff like that. And I, I, it breaks my heart. And people, you know, they say that they are these diseases. They say that um, there's no other way, just these take medicine, da 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 it's just it's just hurtful because see when you say these wrong things and you, and you start believing in what the world starts having you to believe you tend to get jaded and you tend to get off your course of what God has intended you to do in your life and your foundation goes to another turn and then your life tends to fall you start you know um, losing your job or losing friends or you start getting ill or you know, people start dying in your family. You start getting a lot of bit, a lot of bit of debt. You start, you know, um, just just falling, literally. Like your life starts sh like drifting in a way that you didn't see it drifting because your foundation started drifting. You left your first love, which is Jesus Christ. See, at one point, you were up the ladder. You had a great job, and you were doing things for the Lord, and you were, you know, serving as unto the Lord and doing things as God leaded to do, and you were great, right? But then that pride started coming into play. You know, you start listening to all these compliments from other people, and you fed into those lies from the enemy, and then you ended up getting to a place where you're like, you know, Lord, I'll go to church next week. Like, this week, I'm going to hang out with my boss and, like, you know, hang out with my friends and da-da-da, and then the next week, turned into, I'm going to go to church next week, and then I'm going to go to church next week, and I'm going to pray tomorrow, and I'm going to read my word next week, and see, and then you fall off of what God has told you to do, and then you fall off, your, your temple is not being fed the word of God, see, you need daily bread, that's why it's called the daily bread, that's why this is, this is so profound to have the word of God within you on a daily basis, because you tend to drift off and then your temple is dry. And you feed off of other people. You feed off of other religions. Oof, Jesus Christ. You feed off of other, you know, things that you're doing, your your work schedules, everything like that. But that's not fulfilling. Nothing and no one on this earth can satisfy you like Jesus Christ. It's inevitable. The only um, substance is Jesus. Like, that's the only way to satisfy your whole identity in Christ, your whole way of being, your whole way of life, the joy that's unexplainable, the peace that surpasses all understanding. 
I mean, God is so amazing. He He's so loving, so kind, so nurturing. But you're not going to be able to really fulfill and understand that if you don't spend time with him. you got to spend time with him. You spend time to make a house. You spend time to build the house and construct it and design it and paint it and all these things, put furniture in it. Same thing with Jesus. You spend time with him. You get to know him on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's what God wants us to learn on today. He wants us to keep our temple filled with the word of God. This is the sword of truth for a reason. We need this to defend the enemy, to combat things that are not of God, to combat things that have no authority in our lives. See, we speak to our body. When you have pains and aches and um, discomfort, you can speak to your body with believing in the Holy Spirit, but you can speak to your body have the authority from God for it to go and flow in the way that God would have it to go and flow. You have that power, but you have to tap into it. If you never um, speak things in the atmosphere, how would you know that it exists? You have to speak it into existence. Like the same way how the camera was doing what it was to do because the enemy was so, he was so mad about this message, you guys. But I, I combated the enemy. I bind every single time I could attack against this message on today because that's the authority God's given me to speak that. So for you, speak that your temple will align up with the principles of God that your holy that the holy spirit will will flow through like flowing river of water that you will always be enabled by God's doctrine and not by the world's doctrine you're not going to entangle into gossip you're not going to entangle into mischief and fornication and cussing and just doing everything that's not of God because why it's displeasing in God's eyes it brings him no glory. So let's go ahead and go further. Have you sold your house to the devil? Ask yourself that question. Have you sold your house to the devil? Have you? Ask yourself that question. What goes into your body will eventually come out. When things go hard, do you cuss and fuss? When people cut you off when, they're in tr when there's traffic in, in the street, do you cuss them off? Do you rant? Do you talk about people all the time? Are you constantly in this mode of just depression, anxiety, fear? Are you always so doubtful? Do you compare yourself to other people all the time? Ask yourself, have you sold yourself to the devil? Have you? Have you sold your house to the devil? My prayer is that no one has said yes um but but if there's a part of this like you know julissa ooh, i haven't done things that are according to god's principles ooh, i haven't been where i wanted to be at yet in my christian walk ooh, i haven't you know got to the place where i can pray to the lord all the time let me read you this the cost of salvation is free the cost of salvation is free it's a simple conversation. I don't need your money, you know. I, I don't. I don't even need you to tell me that you gave us to Christ. It's a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You talk as onto Him, like like you're hearing me talk to you right now. You talk as onto Him, say, Lord, I messed up. Like I didn't even know you were this loving, but God, I know the truth now, and I am, I'm so remorsefully apologetic that I was. gone astray that I was not in the right setting with you that I was doing things to please my flesh and not please you Lord forgive me I want a clean heart in you oh Lord Jesus I, I want to be renewed in you you know I, I want to understand this Jesus that I hear Jesus talking about Jesus and God and Lord I want to I want to feel that relationship with you I want to understand it Lord Jesus help me he will do that for you because he loves you so much no more condemnation. So the cause of salvation is free. It takes a genuine conversation with Jesus to connect with the Father. Wrestle in prayer until you receive the blessing. Wrestle in prayer until you receive the blessing. Wrestle in prayer until you receive the blessing. There's no ceasing with prayer. You always pray to God to help you in your relationship with Christ. Every promise God gives 
sets the foundation for our eternal life. Every promise God gives sets the foundation for our eternal life. Get your house in order. God is looking for faithful people on this earth that he can trust with his doctrine. He's coming out for the church first. He wants the church with no spot, no wrinkle, clean and pure that are praying as unto him and worshiping him in spirit and truth and actually believing God's principles, his doctrine, his word, and being loving and kind and spreading his gospel to the nation. Like He's looking for faith-filled people that he can trust, that, he, that love him, that will surrender their lives to him, that will yield to him, that will submit to his word, that will submit to his ways. Answer to what God calls you to do. Answer to what God has caused to do. I don't care how little it seems to you. The flesh, you know, might not want to do it, you know. But you do what God has called you to do. Write that book, sis. Start that organization with mothers and children, you know. Teach those children. Pray for the babies. You know, start that ministry where you maybe decorate balloons or you're just an organizer, or you're just a creator, event planner. You know, do the will of God. You know, if you are a restaurant organizer, manager, owner, do what God has assigned you to do. Because no one can take that from you but your flesh. The Spirit has to work within you. See, the, the Holy Spirit has to work within you and flow that river through you. You have to get the daily bread to be fed spiritually every single day. So that you know that when God has set up, it will not fall down. Because it's built on a firm foundation. Let no man separate you from the love of God in the name of Jesus. Now, friends, read this. Our bodies are a temple, the house of the Lord. We do not own our bodies. Stop fornicating before marriage. Stop sinning. Stop having sex before marriage. Stop smoking. Stop drinking. Stop doing things that are going to pull you away from Christ. Do as God leads to do. I'm going to read this to you guys in the NLT version. 1 Corinthians 16-20. Don't you realize that all of you together are the temple of God and that the spirit of God lives in you? God will destroy anyone who destroys this temple for God's temple is holy and you are that temple. I'll read that again. Don't you realize that all of you together are the temple of God and that the spirit of God lives in you? God will destroy anyone who destroys this temple. For God's temple is holy and you are that temple. Hear, hear what God is saying. Stop deceiving yourselves. <laughs> if you think you are wise by this world's standards, you need to become a fool to be truly wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. As the scriptures say, he traps the wise in the snare of their own cleverness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise. He knows they are worthless. So don't boast about following a particular human leader. For everything belongs to you, whether Paul or Apollos or Peter, or the world or life and death, or the present and the future, everything belongs to you. And you belong to Christ. And Christ belongs to God. Friends, God is talking to his people on today. Your body, you do not own. We are spiritual beings in this world. So let's get our house in order. God is coming back for faith-filled people that will do the will of him and not be ashamed of the gospel. So in closing... Snatch back everything the enemy tried to take from you. Snatch it back. Tell the enemy, you go back to the lake of fire. You have no place in my life or my house. Because what God says is. And you believe that. So, friends, repent, renew your mind, and restore your relationship with God. Repent, renew your mind, and restore 
your relationship with God. Repent, renew your mind, and restore your relationship with God. In Jesus' name, get your house in order. Know that I love you guys. I'm praying for you as always. And this has been another message from the Lord. So I'll see you guys next Monday for Butterfly Ambassador Ministries. Monday Motivations. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. God bless you. Know that I love you. And let's get our house in order in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye, guys. Love you.